Hey everybody, Justin Joseph here, Editor-in-Chief at ProjectCWE.com, and at long last, I'm here to deliver our much-anticipated video review for Treyarch and Activision's Call of Duty World at War for the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and PC. Utilizing the very engine that powered Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, Treyarch was able to focus more on tweaking some of the little things, inserting all of the new content, and making sure everything worked as it should. As a matter of fact, the developers analyzed as much official World War II documentation that they possibly could, in addition to interviewing veterans from that gruesome time period, and all this fell into place as you played through two completely separate campaigns. On one side, you were Private Miller with US Marines fighting the Japanese in the Pacific Territories. On the other, you handle the role of Private Dmitry Petrenko of the Russian Red Army as they pull off one of, of the most ambitious revenge plots ever in war history against Nazi Germany. What's really neat about this is that before every mission starts, you hear your particular squad's mentor speaking about what lies ahead, all the while a unique graphic take on the planet features a series of unique animations that emphasize the specific aspects of the war. Even authentic video footage from certain battles and political speeches is featured, which helps keep you immersed even if the speed of the campaign can make it a little tough to follow. This combines with a stellar audio-visual package that beautifully exploits any HDTV and surround sound setup out there. The Marine campaign has you navigate through dense jungles, sinister underground tunnels and caves, and various murky wetlands. On the Russian end, you take it to the Nazis via a series of dilapidated buildings, previously calm grasslands, and the heart of Germany itself. Everything looks wonderful, from the very environments I just pointed out, to the soldier models and their animations, and all the inspiring visual effects. Just wait until you see the explosions from an airstrike, and the toppling of palm trees as a result. The only aspects that bothered me deal with the tank's movement and glitchy hitboxes with Japanese tree snipers. With the former, to me it feels that the tanks are a little too mobile, when they should be a bit more stiff. Regarding the latter, it's annoying that in certain missions in which Tojo snipers hide in palm trees, some of them won't be hit by your gunfire if you're shooting from an angle that the game apparently doesn't recognize. Believe me, I made sure to test these issues, along with any others I eventually point out. Now for the audio aspects, which, just like the graphics, are incredible. Really, the only annoyances I've felt deal with when your squad leaders repeat commands to you incessantly if you're moving slow or just don't want to move forward because you're playing on veteran difficulty or something, in addition to cheesy dialogue when playing online. That's truly it, because everything else sounds awesome. Soldier dialogue is emotional and convincing, every weapon packs great punch, and all the effects from explosives and whatnot grip you from start to finish. Chances are you'll also feel uneasy when you hear the exaggerative shouting from the Tojo as they come at you with bonsai charges. Obviously it's now time for me to talk about whether or not it's actually fun to play Call of Duty World at War, and thankfully for all of us, the game offers an excellent overall experience. The campaigns certainly aren't without their flaws, which I will definitely point out here shortly, but for all intents and purposes, this is an entertaining game, single player, co-op, and competitive. Plus. The game has freaking zombies. Seriously. In the grand scheme of things, the intensity that each campaign features helps you ignore that you're essentially playing a shooter that we've more or less seen a hundred times before. A significant portion of the weapon arsenal has been used already, like the M1 Garand, Panzercheck, Thompson, and various others. There are a few I've never seen though, and they're definitely fun to use thanks to their deadly accuracy and damage. Those mainly deal with the marine light, gun, light machine guns and the German sub-weapons. Plus, there's also the flamethrower that despite being introduced in Call of Duty United Offensive, is one hell of a guilty pleasure in this game. Foilage burns very convincingly in World at War, and witnessing Tojo or Nazis toast to death is about as sinister as first-person shooter kills come. Really, no matter what gun you use, chances are you'll enjoy putting down the enemy. It's just that I find Modern Warfare to be more enjoyable in this regard. Is that really a surprise, though? Weapons from over 60 years ago versus those from present day. You do the math. It also sucks to revert back to all iron sight precision aiming. I sorely miss the red dot and ACOG scopes of yesteryear. 
So this is all fine and dandy, but as you can see that I'm very outspoken about in my written review, I'm borderline embarrassed by how atrocious the AI in this game is. No matter what difficulty you play on, the scripts for enemies make them run right past you to points of cover, and your squadmates do the very same. It's also a little too easy to sneak behind enemy lines and score kills without them ever knowing you were even there. The real kicker is witnessing a fellow marine and Tojo soldier standing a couple feet from each other, guns drawn to the face, and neither does a darn thing. This is all on top of the fact that during most instances in which you really need it, your squadmates don't do squat to help you. In fact, some of your fellow private ranked soldiers really enjoy running right out into the open just to be killed. Seriously, never mind that these issues are even present, how in the hell did they make it past Treyarch's QA? This is completely unacceptable in my eyes, but somehow it manages to not break the game, as it would otherwise. I really hope that I don't discourage you from playing as a result, I merely want to make sure you're aware so you aren't as baffled as I was when I encountered the problems. Unsurprisingly, the campaigns combined for a length that is more or less the same as Modern Warfare's, but we didn't have a problem with it then, and don't really now. If it were any longer, chances are the game would start to feel drawn out, and that's obviously not a positive thing. However, what is likely to continue bringing gamers back until Infinity Ward's next game releases is exactly why people still play Call of Duty 4 to this day like myself, the online component. The previous fact is a true testament to that game's value, but World at War definitely takes it a couple steps further by introducing 4-player co-op to the series, expanding on the competitive infrastructure, and featuring a pleasant distraction in the Nazi zombie mode. I'll start with that last one. After the final credits roll, you're immediately placed in the mode's setting, a somewhat broken down house that is soon mobbed by a horde of Nazi zombie soldiers. The idea is to score points by killing them and repairing the obstacles they rip apart so you can purchase stronger weapons and their ammo. They also drop random power-ups such as 30 second long instant kills, double points, and maximum ammo. By yourself, it's fun to play occasionally, but with one or more friends, it's great to blast all the zombies away and hear everyone scream in terror as the groups become overwhelming. If that wasn't enough indication, the co-op is also pretty slick. While it's very unfortunate that mode-only specific uh, achievements and trophies can be unlocked when playing with buddies, going through the campaign is a real treat. Whether with plain campaign co-op or competitive, which awards all actions with point values, it makes missions on the tougher difficulties a great deal easier, even though you still get your butt handed to you. I've played this with my superior Jared Nickel, and it's very enjoyable. Finally, there's the online competitive, which works very well, but also has one sadly broken element. You start off just like you would have in Modern Warfare. There are predetermined classes, and you choose among them as you make your way to rank 4. However, you're initially restricted to boot camp, team deathmatch, and free-for-all deathmatch as playable modes, which wasn't the case last time. Reactions can vary with the fact that you must gain ranks to unlock the others, but as a new player, it sucks that the boot camp mode doesn't work properly. It's meant to lock you out once you reach level 8, which it did for me, but there's apparently a hack out there or the ability to join a friend currently in the lobby of boot camp if you're higher than that. This not only completely skews the playing field, but it's ridiculously unfair to have a level 20 or higher player own you because he or she knows the maps better and has better weapons and perks unlocked. Treyarch better fix that soon, or risk losing people due to frustration. Everything else is just about the same, just expanded upon. There's a 4 perk system rather than 3 because vehicles have been added to the multiplayer and you have to have one to co coincide with them obviously. The rest is the usual unlock new weapons and perks as you gain more experience. However, the rewards for killstreaks are a little different. You still re acquire radar after 3 consecutive, it's simply called recon plane instead of UAV this time. 5 however, nets you an artillery strike, which allows you to call in extensive mortar fire on a location of your cho choosing, which seems a bit more effective than Modern Warfare's airstrike. However, I'm still on the fence as to whether I like the pack of dogs better than the friendly helicopter. They can be effective, don't get me wrong, but if they don't overwhelm your opponents quickly, they're easily killed. It's at least a neat perk, and logical too, since helicopters didn't really exist back then. Okay, holy cow, this has been a mouthful and I'm actually almost out of time, so I'll end this quickly. I've scored Call of Duty World at War with a 9 out of 10 overall, deeming it gold medal worthy. Thanks everyone for watching as we continue our holiday coverage.